Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. I'm talking to you today from Arizona. It's absolutely beautiful out here this week. I'm right on the Mexican border down near Bisbee and I'm out at my trailer right now as sun is setting and I want to talk to you about a couple of new hobbies that I have that I think you might find interesting. About six or eight months ago, I got into a new hobby, which is astrophotography. And for those of you not familiar with astrophotography, it is using telescopes to take pictures of deep space objects. It can be the moon or the sun as well, but mostly it's deep space objects, the distant galaxies, nebula, things like that, even comets. And so I've really got into this. I sort of have a geeky tech background, as most of you probably know. And I have 30 years of graphic design experience, designing websites, logos, and doing a lot of Photoshop work. So half of the equation with astrophotography is capturing the image with the telescope. That's something totally new to me. And the other half is getting it on your computer and manipulating the data there to bring out all of the details of the galaxy or whatever you happen to be looking at. And that's an area that I sort of excel at naturally. So I've had a little bit of experience with telescopes, but none that I own. I went out to a stargazing uh, astronomy club event in Denver when I lived there back when I was probably in my 30s, something like that, late 30s and I did not have a good experience there. I ran into two problems. One was getting my eye lined up on the eyepiece on the side of the telescope. And the second was that once I actually could see something, it was either just a white dot or a fuzzy blur, like a galaxy, something like that. And neither of those impressed me. They were nothing like photos from Hubble or James Webb or what I would see on the covers of National Geographic or other magazines. It was not like that at all, so I just was not impressed. Looking into the eyepiece, I ran into the problem of the image just bouncing around. I could not get my head and my eye to stay still enough looking through the eyepiece. And then when I would try to steady myself by holding the eyepiece, I would bump the telescope and it would move off the target and then the owner of the telescope would sort of grunt in frustration as he would take over control to line everything back up again, get it focused again so I could look at the telescope through the eyepiece again and again bump it. I just never mastered the ability of looking in there. I would just see this dot moving around, which was the star as my head was moving. You know, I just couldn't get still enough, I don't know. So astrophotography is something totally different in that I'm using a smart telescope, which uses either a phone or a tablet. I'm using a tablet to control the telescope. So let me show you one that I bought. This is actually my second smart telescope. The first one I bought was called a Dwarf 2, and I've sold that and replaced it with this. This is a Seastar S50. I'll put a link down below in case you're interested in checking it out. Both telescopes are around five, six hundred dollars And I have a replacement tripod that I've upgraded to, and then I have an extra battery pack so I can run all night. By default, it's about three hours, but with this, I can literally run all night with the extra battery that I just have Velcroed onto the side. So here later tonight, I'm going to try to shoot some video. I'm not great at shooting night shots. Uh, it's just not my thing for doing videos like this. So uh, please bear with me, but I'll show you sort of how it's set up. Basically what you'll see later tonight is this part here is actually has the lens underneath and it rotates up. It's motorized. So it'll rotate up and then this thing can pivot around and then it can track the galaxies or the stars or whatever I want to look at and I can control it all from inside my trailer over here. So I can sit inside in the comfort of my trailer there and watch Netflix on my laptop or something like that and be controlling the telescope. What, what's really cool is you can see the image improve with every single 10 second exposure from this telescope. So it'll take 10 seconds, collect that image, and then another 10 seconds, take a second image and collect that, and it'll stack them. It's called stacking. And as the image stacks, the photons from the distant object, the nebula or the galaxy, um, it collects more and more and more light. So I might go two, three hours, something like that, on one target 
just collecting data and then the image starts getting clearer and clearer and clearer. I got so into this astrophotography stuff, I just recently upgraded from the small telescope here, the smart telescope in the $500 range, up to a nice, what I call an astro rig. It's a bigger telescope. And I'll save that for next episode, but I did get a bigger astro rig and I've been capturing photos with that. But I figured I'd just talk in this episode here about my new hobby and talk about this smarts telescope and show you a little bit of what it's about. But it's really great because I can be out here at my um, land here. I have 10 acres of land outside of town. This is a Bortle, uh, it's right between Bortle 3 and 4. I'm almost Bortle 3, like right in the edge. There's a little bit of light coming off this wall down here from uh, Mexico and right at the border and so that's a little bit bright and it light pollutes the sky up here but uh, it's pretty awesome you know I've got this beautiful area here there's nothing really around me it's just clear land my closest neighbor is maybe three or four miles away so uh, it's uh, quite a ways oh wow we've got a uh, full moon coming up in the distance We have a full moon coming up on the horizon right there. You may or may not be able to see it in this video. I can't see it on the screen, but I can see it with my eyes. Starting to get dark. I'm going to turn on the Sea Star. One of my favorite things. I just love the Sea Star when it turns on. It actually speaks to you, which is sort of cool. A lot of times it just speaks up, gives you warnings or uh, status of what's going on with it. But it's a pretty, a pretty nifty thing. All right, power buttons over here. You probably can't see it too well. There we go, it's powering up. And it takes probably, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute before it speaks and says that it's ready. Got my tablet over there in the background, warming up. Powering on, ready to connect. There we go, powering on, ready to connect. And we have a nice moon over there. Okay, first thing we want to do is launch the app here. This is the app on, oh, it's a 10 inch tablet I bought from Walmart, it's nothing really fancy and I use it pretty much just for astrophotography so first thing it's going to do is connect and there's two options one is connect to my local Wi-Fi and the other is to um, connect directly to the C-Star. looks like we have a firmware update I'm going to pause this and do that alright we have success here and it's rebooting right now so my little uh, C-Star over there had a little voice said update was successful so it's rebooting right now and here in a minute or two I'm going to try to go over to the moon which is over here. One of the interesting things is most of these smart telescopes rely on looking at the stars. The entire sky up there has been mapped and so it's able to look at three places, just random places up in the sky and be able to determine where the telescope is and where all the other stars are. That's a three-point star calibration is what that's called. But the smart telescopes have a couple other things built into them. They have a compass in there that determines magnetic north to get you close to a target. And that's pretty much what it uses for finding the moon before there are stars around or during the day finding the sun. So it's got to rely on that compass. It can also look at GPS just to see roughly where you are and it knows sort of where to look as a combination of the compass and the GPS. But it's sort of guesswork on the smart telescope for finding the sun and the moon. So don't expect great results when you try to do that. But with stars, it's pretty amazing. It will really find them. If it's got a bunch of stars in the sky, it'll just zip around and go from target to target. It's pretty awesome. So here's the interface. So you pretty much can choose stargazing, solar during the day, lunar, lunar or planetary. So I'm going to click on lunar here and we'll see if we can get it to go over to the moon. So go to the moon. And it wants to be leveled, so let's do that first. All right, that's good enough. We've got intersecting green circles here, so I can click Finish. And now we'll try to go to the moon. So here it is. The little thing is going up on the side. It's uh, pointing upward. You may or may not be able to see that. And it's about to start turning around, so it's about the right height, and I think it's going to guess where it is just by going at the height. 
but I can also manually control it, which is probably what I'll do. Uh, typically I get close and then I just take over manual controls and there's a little digital joystick with some arrows that you can use to direct it. I put on my headlamp so you can sort of see what it's doing. It's uh, randomly scanning so I'm going to start taking over manual control with my tablet. This is the manual control here so I'm just going left. And so here we go. We've got the moon centered and I have tracking on so it's uh, slowly correcting and tracking the moon and it's just looking spectacular. Now you have a whole bunch of different options here. I can do time lapse, I can do photo or video. Uh, for people that are really serious about doing moon photos, they do video and then they pull apart all of the individual frames and then they uh, stack them all together so that you get the maximum image value. I'm just rather easy here. I just uh, click on this and I snap a few individual photos which I think look really spectacular and it's a, a beautiful full, full moon right now. Although the full moon might be totally beautiful, by the way I have a red lens on right now which is typically what you use for doing astrophotography and messing around with telescopes. Um, but the moon is not great for doing things, anything else in the night sky. It pretty much just blows out everything else around it. Just think of it as light pollution. It's beautiful, it's wonderful to see, but uh, for doing other things, it causes all sorts of problems. So most astrophotographers will use uh, sort of filters if they're anywhere close to the moon trying to shoot an object, or they go a certain distance away, like 50 to 80 degrees away from the moon. So there's all sorts of software and websites that can calculate that for you. So those are a few of the things you can do to uh, sort of deal with the moon. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit later till Oh, I think like 10 or 10.30 when some of the objects that I want to look at go above the horizon and capture a few more photos. And then uh, I'll just do, sort of do an outro. I, I just love the astrophotography. It's really great. I've captured now hundreds and hundreds of photos between this telescope and my uh, new astro rig, which I'll show you in another video. And uh, I'll just sort of close out by showing you some images that I've captured uh, with my astrophotography and some of them are just it just blows my mind. It's so amazing. These things are huge They're uh, thousands of light years away most of them and uh, They're just absolutely astoundingly beautiful and I really enjoy this Let's just close out with some music and I'll just display some of the images that I've captured and I hope that you enjoy these Thank you so much for joining me for this video and I'll see you in a future video